and welcome to WWDC 2019. I'm excited to share with you this morning how we're gonna make tvOS even more entertaining and more personal. We completely redesigned the home screen with full screen previews of the best TV shows and newly released movies. Everyone in the home gets their own up next list, plus personalized recommendations for new shows and movies to enjoy. And it's easy to switch between family members using the all new control center. It works just like you would expect it to. TVOS also delivers Apple Music. You're gonna be able to see lyrics to your favorite songs in sync with the music. Now, Apple Arcade is also going to look amazing on the Apple TV 4K this fall. We're extending support to two of the best and most popular game controllers available. Xbox One S, yes, and PlayStation DualShock 4. Now let's talk about Apple Watch. Now across all the watch faces, we're introducing Taptic Chimes. And when enabled, on the hour, you'll feel a silent taptic on your wrist, and if sound is on, you'll hear an audible chime, like this. First, we're bringing more Apple apps to watch. The new audiobooks app, and voice memos, and calculator. And we're now making it possible to create apps that run independently on the watch, no longer requiring a companion iPhone app. WatchOS 6 now enables the streaming audio API. So you can go with just your watch, now, to make it even easier for you to discover these apps, we're excited to bring the App Store to Apple Watch. You can purchase and install an app directly on your watch. So in WatchOS 6, we're introducing Activity Trends. It'll compare your progress over the last 90 days with the last 365. If the trends show that you're maintaining or improving, you'll see an arrow pointing up, and that's great. Keep doing what you're doing. Let's talk about your hearing health. The Dio Noise app uses a microphone to detect decibel levels and can notify you if it's reached a level that could impact your hearing over time. If you tap the Noise app, you'll get more detail and you can use the complication to check, which is to raise or rest. Now there's one more new feature in health and fitness, cycle tracking. So in WatchOS 6, the cycle tracking app gives you a simple, discreet way to visualize your cycle right on your wrist. You can log key aspects of your period and fertility, including symptoms, and you can be notified when it's about to begin. You can also choose to receive a fertile window prediction so you are better informed. And because we wanted to make this available to hundreds of millions of women around the world, cycle tracking is also available without a watch in the health app in iOS. iOS 13 is a huge release packed with lots of capabilities, but we know that nothing is more important to our iPhone users than performance. Unlocking with Face ID, now 30% faster. We've changed the way that we're packaging apps on the App Store. You'll see that your downloads are now 50% smaller and updates 60% smaller. We are bringing dark mode to iOS. Look at that, the gorgeous dark wallpaper. Our notifications look great. Let's take a look at our widgets. They're just awesome. We'll start with news. Check it out with a gorgeous, dark appearance. And your calendar. Let's take a trip into messages. So you see how your images, your emoji, they all look just fantastic. And some new tricks, because now, when you type, you can swipe. Let's take a look at our new share sheet. It looks awesome in dark mode, but you notice in the middle, Sharing suggestions intelligently based on who you share with and who appears in the photos. Your music looks great in dark mode. You can go through some of my recent playback. Of course, start playing some music here. And now, for the first time ever, time-synced lyrics. Now, Safari has new options to quickly change text sizing and as per website preferences. Mail gets desktop class text formatting controls, including support for rich fonts. And Notes gets this beautiful new gallery view, support for shared folders, and much more. Next, Maps. You'll notice in the upper right-hand corner, there is a new binoculars button. When I tap that, I get a brand new look around window. Yep, this is the right place to drop in, so I'm gonna go full screen. 
With Look Around, I get a gorgeous, high definition 3D view. But this is my favorite part. Turn your phone and hold on tight. Smoothly move down the street. Now, for the first time, you can share your location to an app just once and then require it to ask you again next time it wants it. Next, I want to turn to login. We've all seen buttons like this, asking us to use a social account login to get a more personalized experience with an app. And so now we have the solution. It's called Sign In with Apple. Tap it and you're authenticated with Face ID on your device, logged in with a new account without revealing any new personal information. So we're introducing something new. It's called Memoji Stickers. We automatically create a sticker pack for you for each of your Memoji. Now, of course, you can use them in messages, but we've also incorporated them right alongside Emoji in the system keyboard. I wanna to turn to camera and photos. You can see at a glance all your settings. What's really cool is we're bringing all of this to video for the first time. You can rotate a video. I'm so excited to show you guys the new Photos app. I just tap down here at the bottom. And you can see Days is absolutely beautiful. The clutter of the similar photos is gone. I can just scroll and enjoy now. And you can see videos like this time lapse play automatically for me, really bringing my library back to life. So let's head over to Years. So Years gives me a high level overview of my library. What makes Years really special is that it's dynamic. And Photos knows I go to DubDub -Dub every year. So now it's showing me all of my DubDubs -Dub from the past. Let's get started with AirPods. First, when you're wearing AirPods, Siri will now be able to read your incoming messages to you as soon as they arrive and you can instantly respond. Another great new feature is audio sharing. We have all had a time where we wanted to share a movie or a song with a friend. Now you can with just a tap. We are bringing handoff to HomePod. Now when you walk through the door, just bring your iPhone close to your HomePod to instantly hand off your music, a podcast, or even a phone call. And you can just take it with you when you leave the exact same way. Today we're introducing live radio. So you can ask Siri to play stations from iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and Radio.com. This year we have our biggest update to CarPlay since the beginning with a CarPlay dashboard where you can now have your music next to your maps and you still have room for Siri smart suggestions. And it now works with third-party apps like Pandora and Waze. You may notice there's been one thing missing from the iOS 13 story, and that's iPad. We're calling it iPad OS, and I'd like to give you a first look. So watch what happens when I swipe over. I can now pin my widgets right on my home screen. We're bringing multi-window capability to apps on iPad. For instance, I have a single note right here in Notes, but what if I want to have two notes side by side? Well, now I can. Now, browsing and files, of course, you have icon view, list view. Well, how about column view? Great for digging through deep file hierarchies, you get a great file preview right here and quick actions for things like rotating document uh, images, making PDFs, and great rich metadata right at the bottom. Now we're also improving the way you can share files. For instance, in iCloud Drive, we now support folder sharing. That's right, you can now plug in a thumb drive. Thumb drives, external disk drives, and, and uh, SD cards all show up right in the Files app. But now this one's really great too. Sometimes when you're working with a camera, you'd like to import directly into an app like Lightroom, and now you can. We're also bringing a download manager to Safari. So navigating long documents, you can now grab the scroll indicator and jump anywhere in the document instantly. Moving the cursor is easier than ever. Just pick it up and drag it where you want it to go. And selecting text, just put your finger down and drag out a selection. You want to copy or cut, just a three finger pinch to copy, a three finger spread to plop it right down. Let's turn to the Mac. This is the new Mac Pro. So we're using a brand new Intel Xeon processor and it has up to 28 cores, six channels of super fast ECC memory and 12 DIMM slots enable an incredible 1.5 terabytes of system memory. 
So we're bringing PCI expansion back to the Mac. It has eight internal PCI slots. Now this I.O. card has two Thunderbolt 3 ports, two USB-A ports, and an audio jack. And there are also two more Thunderbolt 3 ports conveniently located on the top of the system. This includes Adobe, Autodesk, Serif, and Blackmagic, who are all announcing support for the new Mac Pro today. Side effects, Red, Epic, and Avid are also announcing support today. It's a 32-inch LCD display with over 20 million pixels. It's a 6K Retina display. And so we call this display the Pro Display XDR. Now, if you look at other systems configured with comparable components, you'll see that they cost around $8,000. The new Mac Pro will start at $59.99. It's going to be available this fall. The Pro Display XDR will be $49.99 for the display itself. The Visa Mount Adapter will be $199, and the Pro Stand, $999. It's Mac OS. Catalina. We begin with iTunes. The future of our iTunes is not one app, but three. Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, and Apple TV. And now I want to turn to something new. We call it Sidecar. Now you can use your iPad as a second display for your Mac. Now voice control lets you control your Mac entirely with your voice. We're also bringing it to iOS as well. Open Maps. Show grid. Long press at 20. Open app switcher. Four. Tap share. Tap Tim. Tap send. The next, I want to turn to a new solution that helps you find your Mac should it ever be lost or stolen. It's called Find My. Now, Find My combines Find My iPhone with Find My Friends, and it's now available on the Mac and iOS devices as well. But also, for the first time, we're bringing screen time to the Mac. We've been working on a new project that internally we call Project Catalyst, and it's new technology that lets developers quickly and efficiently create apps for the Mac based on their existing iPad apps. And ARKit is a major update. Now, this is insane. What used to require painstaking compositing by hand can now be done in real time. Motion capture. Just point your camera at a person and we can track in real time. This is Minecraft Earth. Let's use motion capture and make your character wave. Try one wave. Let's try to trigger the double wave. Cool. And of course, all of this great software 